But there's something in the math that has to do with the variable constant of three and a third, plus three and a third, minus three and a third. It fluctuates back and forth, but it's always constant. <laughs> as far as it flips over into the Hadori side and then back to the Hadori side, and there's an interaction between the, the core radiation units that takes place there. And that's what I think makes the math a little bit hard to figure out on this. There's some, well, we'll get the math eventually, but it'll probably be like five minutes before we run out the gates. I'm not sure, but I do think there's a key in there that it, it, if the math on this is anchored fully, I think there's something that, it, it, I wouldn't catch it, but somebody who's a physicist that knows about atomic interactions and things, it would give them a piece of something that would allow them to do something not good, as if they're not doing <laughs> not good stuff already, but there's something in there that's dangerous that if, if people, you know, knew about it and started playing with it, trying to do, like, weaponry or, let's say, make time portals where they don't belong any more than they already have. See, on the planet, we have people that, even at the height of what we might call the Illuminati people on this planet, the world management team and stuff, they're still the underlings. They, they've got themselves into situations with visitors that they have no idea. They'd be terrified if they realized what they've agreed to. Some of them agreed to what they agreed to because they were terrified. And they realized that <laughs> either agree or get wiped out, basically, because there's been contact here for, for ages now. I remember there always was, really. But ever since the, yeah, before Roswell, in, in, you know, in the 40s, there has been contact. They've given them all sorts of things to back engineer and play with, and they've given them bits of new technologies. That's where all your nanos and things are coming from. But there's certain pieces that even the ETs haven't given to the scientists. So they would love to find certain things. But if they did, the damage that they would create without meaning to, I mean, right now, we're reliving Atlantis. What they're doing with uh, genetics right now it, they're start, I mean, they started with Dolly, I believe, at least on the outside. She was doing dogs. Uh, what's next? In, in Atlantis, it got to be wacky, where let's try, like, a rooster crossed with a pig and see what you get. You know, that kind of thing. Just to see. The idea of growing organs for humans, organs that are failing, by enslaving animals as your, your, your biological petri dishes, all of this stuff is the Atlantean stuff coming right back again. These are the things that led to the downfall of that culture. And uh, they're right in our face again. So some of the numbers we may have to wait a while to get <coughs> as far as what the formulas are. But without the formulas, you don't even need the formulas to see how the expansion takes place and what the spiral looks like and to understand what the spiral is. I know that when, I, I don't, I'm not sure how um, the other paradigms teach as far as what that spiral has is significance to all of creation. But I, I know it's been said as the, the primary pattern for all vortices. Well, they left out a word. Black hole, med well, actually, black hole metatronic vortices do follow the, the Fibonacci spiral and, and the golden mean. But I don't know if they've ever linked it into the entire you know, creation maps and showing how you know, how, how everything from the first part, I don't even talk about particle. You haven't even let an old particle exist. Why? Because they don't phase anymore, not in their system, and they don't want people to know that level of knowledge. But we're showing you where these spirals and these sacred geometries, why they're important, because they affect everything from cell division and how long you're going to live through that cell division, because they affect everything from the quantum of energy that's going to come out from source that you're going to be able to anchor in your body, and therefore how long the little uh, radiation units or the joules that are stored in your atoms and in your atomic windows are going to be able to fuel your body. And if you can't recharge your jewels, you're going to have a very empty treasure chest. And that's when the body dies, that kind of thing. So we're looking at just, now we're just seeing the circles, how they expand, and just so you can see a little bit of the difference in the sizes. They start out very small, around the first part of chi. And this would be like the outer cell around clusters of cells, and there would also be cells extending out from that, as we saw in the light body structure, where you'd have a center cell that had four in it, and then you'd have the 12 around the outside of it. So this is just showing that center cell that runs from the cathara 12 point to the cathara 1 point on every one, just showing the diameter of the center cells. So they expand out, and by the time you get done with your first cycle, your first six cycle, it's... Uh, this, you will have a size this large. This is the next, the part, the size of the next particle will be this size as far as building quantum and its replication through all of that, pulling back in the source and all coming back out again and creating particle one. So creation gets bigger as it's coming outward. 
Um, and I finally figured that out. I didn't know. I, I didn't know if it went the other way, which way it went. <laughs> you know, do we start really big and then get really small and then get big again, or which? But it appears we start with a very tiny first part of and expand outward from there. Next one, please. This will show. You take that circle, that big circle around the outside of it. See this circle in here? All of what you saw in the last graph is contained in that. That's the first six cycles. This is the size increase from the second cycle, and this is the curve. It's actually a much prettier spiral than the, the, than the golden mean. It has a grace to it that's just that's really lovely. It, it, you know, it just it has a curve. It has a flow where it doesn't come crank around the, the, the corners. And I'll show you in a little bit what this looks like next to the the uh, Fibonacci, or actually the golden mean. I didn't bother with the Fibonacci, but the Fibonacci is close approximation of the golden mean. This show the next six cycle as far out as, the, yeah, this one took it all the way out. I had to do two more and shrink them both down to get this far with it. I've got to find out next what the pattern is, how many six cycles. Now, technically, a six cycle is actually a 12 cycle because it does a six, then it goes, comes back around and does a real fast six on the contraction and then expands out to the next level. So a six cycle is really a 12 cycle. And we've said with incarnation, we have at least in, a, in, in the divine blueprint for, for humans, for the 1720 itself, is at least uh, two 12 cycles of expansion and contraction, right? Once you're in, you've got to cycle through those cycles. Unless, of course, you activate your tachyon cycle and blow yourself out of here and go back to where you came from fast, <laughs> which is what we're going to be working on doing. <laughs> Because basically, when the sp- as the spiral moves out, it carries light force currents out, and those light force currents break down into many, many different currents that interact, and the little spark units within them interact to form what become the uh, primary light force creation rays that become the spectra of not just visible light and sound, but the electromagnetic spectrum, everything from um, you know from UV rays to to gamma rays to everything above and below them on the spectrum. The thing is, both light and sound waves come out of the same place. They come out of these things that are called transfiguration waves. Transfiguration waves are born from the spiral. The spiral is the basic current that it feeds the expansion of the, of, of the uh, light body cell structure as it spirals out and into expansion. And from those, all sorts of small breakout currents come, um, manifest within each of the levels of the light body, each of those currents further interact at different angles. And when currents interact at different angles, depending on what, the, on what those angles are, they will make certain types of sparks or not. When, w- with the creation mechanics of the Chris code, the angles are, um, the angles, everything from the cathargrids to the arcs, the lotus arcs that form in the cathargrids, like in one cathargrid where you have your lotus arcs at 45 degree angles, those are the angles of interface that allow, when the light cells phase together and expand and contract, allow very specific quantum sparks to be made. And it's the building of those specific quantums that allow for the re-triggering of the original keys. It's like, if you use a metatronic spiral, you're actually taking a, as if somebody wrote a song, and you had to sing that song, the same notes in that song, to get back to where that first somebody called God's source is, but somewhere along the line, somebody hijacked it and create, created another scale and got rid of literally the notes that that song were made out of. Didn't get rid of them. They're still there. You can't get rid of them. They're eternal. But what you can do is block them from a certain reality field and build a reality field on false ones, false tones, false types of radiation units. What we call electrons here have been mutated by the mutation of this particular spiral. Because when you mutate this, spir- mutate this spiral, You can't mutate the core of it. But what you can do is interface it or intercept it somewhere here and bend it in a way it doesn't belong to be bent. And if you bend this at a different angle, it will change the angles of everything. It will change the angles of the primary arcs of expansion and contraction. It will change the diameter of the uh, spheres that evolve from the spiraling out of that energy. And that is what the Metatronic Code was um, created to do. In fact, they never quite worked as well as they hoped, because it never was able to take out source and become the source. That was the objective. It showed how distorted these people's thinking were, because you just can't do that. Eternal means eternal. Yeah, it implies there's something there that's going to make sure it is eternal. And um, the Metatronic Code is, is meant to interface with this and literally, in a way, 
that it will split these currents, and because the metatonic code can't hold all the natural creation currents, it interfaces and splits the currents and then bends them and runs them in reverse order. Where, if, let's say, you have a, a set of a, encryptions or jewels, this for example, that line up in a particular part of the current that say, you know, like, do, re, mi, right? They will take that, bend part of it, and get a shorter version of re, mi, do, right? They'll reverse the encryption on it and use it where you can get counter spin and you can force bondings between spark pulse currents that normally would not bond. It changes the polarity orientation from uh, you know, electrical um, positive or negative charge. By bending this spiral through using um, artificial scalar mechanics to interface the spiral at certain points, they, they have been able to create artificial light currents that they call light currents that are electrical, but they're running on reverse electrical spectrum. All of our planetary electricals run on these right now. But what's kind of neat is there's still a carrier wave, because, and there always will be in any metatonic form, at least a little bit of the original encryption left, at least a little, because the metatonic form itself is built on our encryption. It's built on the crystal encryption. It wouldn't exist without it, because it requires the light balls that, were, that are formed by this spiral in order to take them, bend them at the wrong angles to each other to make the false currents that they're using. So every little, there, there's a little bit of organic encryption left in even metatronic forms. And it's because of that that you can see, even in our electrical sometimes, the atom may love to do this. They must have a, a way of accessing easier than Iani did for some reason, I'm not sure. But they, you will hear sometimes even the sound tones that we sing, you might hear them coming through your fan or your refrigerator electrics. You know how you can hear home into electrics? We might start hearing homes become symphonies, and it's, you're not going nuts. <laughs> there are times when the guardian races are actually sending through the frequencies that they, whatever ones they can anchor, to keep alive as much of the natural encryption as possible, because the longer that can be kept alive here, the longer it will be a comfortable place for anything that's not fully <coughs> metatronic as well. Because if they fully metatronic this place, we would, our, our biologies, just because we have, still have Chris code left, it would be very difficult for us to completely transmute, while we don't have all of our Chris code left, to transmute the frequencies that metatonic systems are built on because their currents run in reverse. Right now we're blended. All of our bodies are blended. We have both. And that's why we can survive here. And what, as we progressively build the currents on the natural crystal spiral, the crisp spiral, as we begin the process of freeing this spiral from its metatronic harness, we will progressively gain frequency strength to more and more easily transmute whatever messes of reversals that the metatronic frequencies running on our planet are bringing in. Just think of all the electrical lines that run on our planet, all the phone lines. Do you realize that every time you punch in a number on a phone, be it digital or not, you know, be it a, a cell phone or a regular phone, it is creating a numerical code in the planetary grid. It is setting a base pulse rhythm. We're, they are working a, ba a base 10 reversed base pulse rhythm here. All of our maths are built on that right now. Maybe that's why another reason why it's a bit difficult to translate the base 12 maths into the base 10 maths in any way that, you know, that, that makes sense. But literally, we are being beamed continually all of the time by reverse current frequencies right through our electricals. And we're, it's going to be more of a problem now because they're going to be using those large vortices that look like satellite dishes that don't belong at our poles. They're angling them now through the graviton machine. They are angling them to take direct feed from the Buddha black hole system. They can only do it as long as they're going to have, they're, they're going to run for their money at this point because uh, they, they will have to shut their gates down right before a pulse releases or it will fry their gates. The, the hub frequency will go just like it would ours. If we didn't shut the regular star gates down here at interface through the arc gates, the hub pulse would come up, run the grids, and they go right through into their black hole system and they'd be going home real fast. A space dust, because it creates what is called a red pulse, which is, um, it hits at the, the D1 frequency levels, that's why they call it red, because it has to do with the D1 uh, waveform spectrum. And it literally just breaks all the particle apart, back to their original, you know, single units. And on the next backflow current, or the next inhale, back to source, they all go back as pieces, as space dust. So this is what the black hole, people that end up with themselves in black holes, have a choice to make. They can go back with dignity 
whenever their black hole runs out of energy. If they got themselves in that position, it wasn't by accident. Nobody fell in the black hole that could, couldn't back, get back out of it because they made good choices about the use of energy. All right, seriously. People don't incarnate into those systems. There are people here that are going to go black hole fall. They've been involved. If you look at their karmic histories, if you, which is what they're doing in the other space-time locations, all right, well, who were you in Atlantis? What did you do in Lemuria? Who were you on Tara? These things matter to who you are now simply because you will get the consequence of the wholeness of who you are whether or not you try to play nice this time. That means it doesn't, it, it's not about going around judging people, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're bad. And you're, you don't know. You might have been a mass murderer in one of those places. You, know, you, you might have helped build the beast. At this point, it doesn't matter in terms of pointing fingers and blaming, not at yourself or anybody else. That's why yeah, we, we're not going after any of the people that are teaching the other paradigms. We don't hate them. We feel bad for them, actually, because a lot of them just don't realize this lifetime that they're teaching this. There were times in Atlantis, oh, they remembered really well. We were betrayed by them quite a lot in, in Atlantis. There are certain ones that we love dearly of the Anu races that joined the Emerald Covenant and were working side by side with us and stabbed us right in the back and took all the teachings we gave them and used them to help create this on Earth. And uh, they're still walking around, you know, or running to age groups usually. <laughs> right? Or sometimes they're, you know, in old age groups as well as part of old traditions. 